Peggy 18. So we wanted to do something really interesting with Blacklist and the co-op experience. We wanted to actually integrate it a lot closer into the main story for the game. Um, so you'll, you'll see four different types of missions throughout the game, 14 unique maps. They're given by the different characters that are on the plane, part of Sam's team, fourth echelon. And each character kind of adds a different kind of flavor to a mission. Found a lead that points to a hacktivist collective in Estonia. So you'll see someone like Grimm, who's an old school type of character for Splinter Cell. She's really a lot more about the ghost play style. She wants you to sneak in, get some information, sneak out. Doesn't want a big body count, obviously. So all her missions have to be done in, with stealth completely. If you get detected, you gotta start all over. So it's something for those hardcore players. Warren is using the blacklist as a distraction to steal nukes from India. The Briggs missions are actually more of the co-op narrative campaign. Really, we play a lot with the three different major play styles, Ghost, Panther, and Assault. We'll focus on one for a specific exotic moment to, to give that variety, to give that excitement to the game. Isaac Briggs in Splinter Cell Blacklist is actually an old CIA operative um, that Grimm signs on for Fourth Echelon. So he wasn't pre-approved by Sam, so you see some tension in the beginning part. Sam doesn't really trust him. But really, at the end of the day, Briggs is kind of an old school Sam type of character before Sam has seen everything that Sam's seen. So as that relationship grows, as they go through missions together in single player and in co-op, you'll notice that relationship uh, grow a lot more and Sam start to trust him a lot more. Wrestling fan? You said non-lethal, you didn't say how. Quieter the better. We want to make sure both players were needed for the missions. Um, and really to do that, we made sure it wasn't uh, linear of experience. There wasn't one skinny hallway you had to go down and that was it. There were so many different options. So it's up to the player if they want to um, hang back, if they want to split up, if they want to stick together and watch each other's backs. But really because of how we set up all the, all the enemies throughout the level, all the different archetypes, you really can't have one player just going on ahead and beating it. That other player needs to be there for support at the minimum. He needs to be watching that player's back. But two great players can actually split up provide Overwatch support, provide different strategies um, that will kind of open up the map and, and really show a lot more gameplay. Sam, I'm good to go. There's a leadership team here in Toronto, but Shanghai is actually creating our maps. And what's great about them is they've, uh, they, not only do they have a lot of passion into, into creating these maps, but they've actually worked in a lot of Splinter Cell games in the past. Overall, we really wanted to go big. We wanted to give the, a ton of content with Splinter Cell Blacklist. And we're really excited just all, the amount of different locations, the amount of how you can really feel that fourth echelon is kind of a, a global uh, kind of organization that's always stopping global threats. 